Greetings, I'm Dr. Max Gomez, and I'm here speaking with Dr. Carl June, immunologist at the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania at the fifth Vatican International Conference here. Uh, Dr. June, welcome. Nice to see you again. Uh, let's talk for a minute here about conferences in general. Uh, we've all been to so many different scientific conferences, medical conferences and such. They tend to be sort of one dimensional, kind of focused on, on a particular topic. Why do you think this Vatican conference has value? What, what is it about it that makes it different? Uh, well, that's a great question, Max. Uh, it's been my experience that when you get cross-cutting uh, expertise across you know, several disciplines and you know, different disease types, there, there's an amazing fertilization of new ideas that come out uh, that you wouldn't get from reading your own specialty uh, literature. That's terrific. And that's, that's obviously what part of the value here. But now let's go back to the, one of the areas, of course, that you're uh, well known for, the development of CAR T cells, chimeric antigen receptor therapy. How did you come up with that idea to, to manipulate T cells here to turn them into therapies? Well, in, in some ways, Max, that story is really dovetails with what, the value of Vatican uh, conference mm -hmm. like this. Um, I actually started working in HIV, which was, is, as you know, is a failure of the immune system. And so we worked on how to rebuild that. And that turned out to be quite successful in the early 90s. And then the drugs came along and, and HIV, frankly, in, the, mm -hmm. in, in most countries began, became kind of like a treatable illness, just like high blood pressure. Uh, and, and then we found that what we had developed for HIV, uh, cell CAR, CAR T cells, could actually be directly applied to cancer patients. So it was one of those, uh, you know, uh, examples where science, you know, uh, direct research in one area can directly then benefit later another mm -hmm. seemingly unrelated area as diverse between HIV AIDS and cancer. You know, it, it really does take a mind that is open to hearing from other fields, as, as you said there, and being able to, to apply them. And one of the first places that your CAR T therapy was applied in a child uh, was Emily Whitehead, who um, I uh, also met, and 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 her parents. Uh, how was she doing? You you treated her for uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Uh, that was now, gosh, was that maybe seven years ago now? <laughs> Time flies. We're getting older, Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we treated her in April 2012. And, uh, you know, I was then, you know, really privileged to, that she could attend with us at the Vatican conference. And, and uh, you all saw her then. She's now uh, looking at colleges. She's a straight A student in high school and completely healthy and normal. And still in remission. And still in remission. Yeah. That is, that's, that's fabulous. She's five so feet, 10 inches tall. You know, she was a little six-year-old when we treated her. I remember seeing those pictures. So uh, it looks like, at least in this particular application, this is a durable therapy uh, that, that will last. The memory cells are there to keep her in remission. Yeah, that's the wonderful aspect about a, a cellular therapy is it can give you a form, as you just said, of memory. And you know, most other drugs, like I mentioned, high blood pressure, you take pills every day and it doesn't cure it. Mm -hmm. It just you know, takes a lid off it. In the case of CAR T cells, um, Emily and many others now, we now have the long-term follow-up. Um, the cancer hasn't come back. Uh, and by at least uh, the data we can follow, it looks like it's curative. We just published in the New England Journal of Medicine earlier this month, the five-year follow-up of our adults uh, who were treated later uh, with lymphoma. And now five, we haven't had a single patient who was in remission after a year, who then relapsed uh, in the ensuing four years, you know, to a total of five years. So they also, these adults uh, appear to be on the same track that Emily is on. That's, that's remarkable. One of the things that, that uh, uh, side effects that Emily had initially in her, in her treatment, especially because she was the first one, was the so-called cytokine storm uh, that 
in, in her case was was almost lethal. Um, how have we managed to figure out how to treat that uh, or control that? And does that in any way uh, reduce the effectiveness of the CAR T therapy? Well, uh, that's a great question. So that is the major cytokine, I mean, the side effect is cytokine mm -hmm. storm, uh, which is usually starts with a high fever, but yet the patient isn't infected. Um, and so we found out how to manage that with a drug called tocilizumab, which blocks the cytokines. So in, in 2017, when the FDA approved the treatment that Emily was given, they co-labeled the CAR T cell approval with that drug tocilizumab. So the doctors mm -hmm. have it on hand. But we've also found really unexpectedly that the amount of cytokine storm that a patient has is related to how much tumor they have. So Emily was treated very late and had literally pounds and pounds of tumor. What's happening now is that patients are getting referred earlier in the course of their disease and they don't have pounds of tumor. And so most of those patients don't even have cytokine storm. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, that's what's called stage migration in, in uh, therapies where uh, the side effects of something maybe late in the disease can be different if it's earlier in the disease. Interesting. So I know that the early uh, applications of, of this CAR-T therapy was in so-called liquid tumors, uh, blood tumors. Um, how has that been? Have you been able to get over the hump to apply it to solid tumors? Well, that is clearly the major scientific challenge facing the field. So when we uh, infused Emily in 2012, there was no industry. Uh, literally, it was thought to be sort of an academic curiosity. Uh, and then uh, Novartis and all the large pharmaceutical companies now have gotten into this field. And, and all across the world, there are now hundreds of groups working on this issue that you've mentioned, which is, can we apply that same technology to all the solid tumors that are um, unfortunately most common and most lethal. And uh, I'm excited to say there's progress there. And I think, you know, we have that in sight. We just don't know exactly when, but there is a lot of progress. There are new other blood cancers also uh, being uh, shortly to be FDA approved as therapies in the US as well. Great, great. Carl, one of the uh, characteristics or, or drawbacks, if you will, of uh, at least the initial CAR T therapies was extraordinary expense. Uh, it's because each one is a one-off or a bespoke uh, uh, treatment. How do we go about reducing that cost? Yeah, that, that's clearly, you know, I, I mentioned the scientific challenge that you brought up of, of, of you know, extending the technology of solid cancers. The, I look at the, um, what you just mentioned, the cost, there's two issues. So one is it's actually an engineering issue. Uh, and when you have uh, um, a lot of engineers working on how to make something cheaper and more effective, that happens you know, as, as computers, for instance, have con you know, come down and mm -hmm. cell phones massively uh, since they were initially made. Um, but So that's one thing that will happen, just an engineering solution to a bespoke meaning it's everyone's own cells. It's made on that one by one basis. Uh, the, the impetus to do that is that it works. It's, it's a, a curative therapy where we didn't have any before. But the other aspect now is something we call off the shelf cells. And this is where one can make cells say for, uh, for car cells that are not from your own cells, but from other sources such as um, uh, other healthy blood donors. Normally they'll give red blood cells and there are as you know, if you're an O negative donor, then you can be a universal blood donor. We now have genetic and gene engineering technologies to convert um, people into being universal uh, T cell donors so that we could make CAR T cells mm -hmm. in big batches. And that will cut the price down uh, and, you know, by orders of magnitude. Oh, that's very hopeful. Thank you for all of that information. And and all the work that you're doing. Uh, I don't have to tell you to keep it up because I'm sure you will.